Hello and welcome to the 2018 Waco Annual Charity Open from Waco, Texas. We've got Joe Mesh Pro coverage of round one. We've got some Texas boys, Paul McBeast, Big Sexy Commentary, Nate Sexton, and Jeremy Colling. And we're here at Waco. One of the uh, most clever tournament names. Yeah, yeah. sure. It's, a, it's an acronym, obviously, Waco Annual Charity Open. And we have a really great card. Very windy first round. Yeah, it was pretty windy out there. Hole one, par three, 291. And you're gonna have to feel the wind right away here. With the big cliffs across the river, it really funnels right down. This shot is tricky because you have to kind of get up high early, put the disc up in that wind. Hopefully these guys can control it, keep it in bounds. And there's OB right on this hole that you couldn't see in that flyover, but there's a wall there to protect it. So the really tricky thing for a lefty is to skip against this hillside, but that wall is there to protect as you see here, mm -hmm. but um, it's really difficult for a lefty to put this one any closer than 25 feet. Here is Landon. See how the wind reacts here. And we're gonna be throwing into a headwind any holes that are going this direction. That's a great uh, shot. As you see the flag blown. Yeah, that is a really nice play there. If you're playing that hyzer shot, it's um, you wanna land it on a kind of a soft angle. Um, coming with spike hyzer, you're gonna roll back down the hill as you see there from Paul, but it looks like he maybe caught a little bit of that cabbage right over the uh, OB line. Yeah, maybe. And here is Miles. Miles is no stranger to playing in heavy wind conditions, but Ooh. this is way early on the release. That lifted quick. Yeah. Watch your heads, everybody. That's going to be tough because he's probably 50 feet away in yeah. the wind. Downhill headwind, OB behind the basket. Tough putt to run. Here's Addison. Oh, boy. Okay, it sat down pretty quick. I really like the logo they have that's kind of throwing it to the bridge downtown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Hippodrome. The Hippodrome in, uh, in Augusta, Georgia as well. Two different Hippodrome places yeah, here on yeah. tour. Some other. It's a good disc golf name. Paul for the birdie, and that was a yeah. floppy duck. <laughs> quack, quack. <laughs> Good start there from Landon. Nice yeah. birdie putt. And, and yeah, it's just the wind just never really died down all day long. So this is going to become an issue until we get into the woods a couple holes from now. Yeah. But um, fortunately, the woods here are so thick that we really weren't dealing with that much in the woods. So yeah. really, we want to get out with, um, unfortunately, we have a bogey there for miles. But if you can get away with a couple under here in these open holes, get into the woods and then... yeah. A whole new tricky uh, part of disc golf comes up there. Definitely. Hole two is a par four at 616 feet. You got an OB path along the right side. A couple trees, but it's a it's a nice hole, especially into a headwind. It plays uh, tough enough, even at a little bit of a shorter distance. You're going to see these guys just go with big, fat, wide rim drivers, trying to move it up as far as they can, and then try to play an upshot in there that's not going to skip too much. Yeah, on a calm day, this is pretty easy to uh to get a three almost every time if you can keep it lo drive low here off the tee and uh whoa oh, i didn't see too many shots go that far left yeah but we'll see where that how that looks it's um pretty easy to get two shots up there relatively i mean on every every time you play this hole it's i don't know it's just not that difficult but yeah with the headwind i mean it just plays like 200 feet further it seems like yeah and the upshot it's just hard to play the touchy shot you would like to play you have to go over stable and that brings a whole lot of problems there's paul with the low line and just narrowly avoiding that y tree in the middle that's really what you're looking for just keep something low to avoid those uh it's a pretty low uh low ceiling on this hole all the way up so yeah it is a bit low but that'll be good he should be happy with that and miles looks like he's hit the line perfectly get around that Right into the same kind of yeah. zone as Paul. And that's going to give him maybe 180 to 200 feet left. But if you hit something early, it's going to leave you a much more difficult approach here. And wow, what that a... That was pretty well done. Into that headwind. That was really nice. Yeah, that was, that was a great touch shot there. Uh-oh, this needs some skips. Oh, good. Landon Got Truss it. in the forehand. What a beautiful oh, shot yeah. that is. That's wow. cool. Into a headwind, that takes so much trust to leave that over the sidewalk. Beautiful approach there. A 
Great nice shot, shot from, Miles. From Seaborn. And Paul, AVRX3, I think. You know, I'm going to go ahead and do this real quick. AVRX3 just went in my bag for this tournament. I am a huge fan of that nice. disc. I need to try it. Ooh, oh, good I... effort. Good birdie run there from Addison. And Paul with the birdie. These guys are really showing how it's done on this hole. Yeah, those are great approaches. I mean, Addison went out of position, throws a really nice turnover approach into this headwind. Yeah. Delicate touch, just barely over the top of the uh, of the chains hitting the band. But um, there's a lot of guys out there that you know lining up a 20 foot headwind putt. I'd be kind of like, oh man, this is tough. But yeah. Miles is not one of those guys. No. I don't really get nervous for him. He he is no stranger to making those windy putts. I just feel like he's gonna cut right through it. All right, so three birdies there on hole two. One par. Hole three, par three, 294 feet. No out of bounds really to speak of unless you really get offline to the right. This basket is elevated though. You don't see it in the drone footage, but this one is put up on those DGPT barrels. So it's a little bit harder than it might otherwise be. And it's kind of a headwind coming straight down this um, plateau up there. So a hyzer shot was a really nice play in this day. Um, keeping one high, but as you see here, Landon goes with the low shot to avoid the wind altogether and a really nice shot hitting the line and that was good. Giving him about a 20 foot right to left cross one putt. Paul I really going big hyzer here. Yeah, this I really feel like this is the play. And it's it's so strange because you see so many trees up there, so many limbs in the way. Yet it seems like so many hyzer shots get right through there. Mm. It's really the preferable play for anyone who feels comfortable with a hyzer and Miles Seaborn is certainly one of those guys. Got that nice and wide. And this wind just really helps for this hyzer shot to get that swing that you like just like that. Perfect. Leaving himself an 18-foot tailwind putt, which is exactly what you'd want. And the forehand kind of gets away from Addison a little bit, but it is flexing pretty good. Wow. Wow. That? Okay, so it was perfect. But yeah. out of his hand, I did not like it at all. But it was a very overstable disc, apparently. Yeah, high amount of turn at the early part of that flight. And really, uh, wow, big time putt. See that one more time. Great putt. That is great. Yep. Had to uh, use the back edge of the cage there to hold that one in. Wow, and we're looking at a star frame here. That's great. Yeah, this is, I mean, the whole average is just below par at 2.93, but... Um, I mean, I would say it's pretty tricky with this elevated basket placement, and there's just a lot of technical different lines you can pick on this hole, and you yeah. typically don't see four drives get clean, especially not uh, four drives that are going to hit their putt on an elevated basket in this kind of wind. No, for sure. I mean, it's uh, I think the wind is, is responsible for at least a third of a stroke on this day. You yeah. know, a calm day, I think this hole would average clo closer down towards 2.5. Yeah. Hole four, par four, 441. This begins nine straight holes in the woods. The course, totally different character on this, this section. So this one is a really twisty, narrow par four, as you can tell, pretty short, but like supreme placement required to really give yourself a good chance at the three. Yeah, this is the most technical hole on the course and it's the first one in the woods. So it really is kind of baptizes you by fire right from the beginning. And you can see here, any kicks off the fairway, mm -hmm. the best case scenario is four. Yep. There's very little room for any creativity unless you're right down the center cut. Oh, this is too far right. And yeah, it really takes a, a flip up on the inside line as you see Paul go down the outside, right side. You want to have something moving down this middle left side gap. And this, this could be good. Yeah, that looks really good. If and it just kind of, yep. if it stays on the edge, he could lean out. But I don't know. I don't think that did stay on the edge. And Miles is trusting a faster disc to get down the fairway, but didn't quite have the, oh man, oh. two brutal little kicks there. And yeah, you see the average score in this hole, 4.39. I mean, that just shows you right there. 440 foot par four, the average is yeah. almost half stroke over four. It's pretty amazing, really. Yeah. If you pull out the caddy book and you see a par four at that distance, you're kind of licking your chops, thinking, yeah. oh, easy birdie, but no way. 
Paul with a nice little out shot should set himself up for a good chance to save. Here's what Miles has left after a big drive, but also a big skip. Looks oh, wow. like he actually has done really well. Great approach there from Miles. That's going to be a bonus birdie if he can make that putt, which I think he will. Wow, that was amazing. Yeah, ooh, that Good. slowed down nicely. Yeah, had that not hit that tree there and gotten clean, which is really difficult to do, to get through that clean without hitting anything. Yeah. But uh, if it had done that, he may have been in trouble of going down. As you see, this basket is ooh, <laughs> precariously. aggressive. Yeah, right there on the edge of that hillside. And if it trickles down, you can easily find yourself in the water there. Here's Landon. And that will be Landon's first par. After a nice three down start. Nice oh. putt. Great par save from Addison. Scrambling the whole way through and manages to pick up a really good four. Yeah, that is good. And this is Paul for his par. Well done. A little bit longer putt left than I think he was expecting, but... Yeah, that happens on this hole. It just trickles away. And a great birdie coming up if he can connect here. Only 13 birdies on the day. Wow. The Rat is the newest mid-range made by Innova Champion Discs. It has a low profile, which makes it comfortable for both backhands and forehand shots. Be sure to look for it soon at your local stores and online retailers. Hole five, par three, 264 feet, kind of up the steps here. You have the first hill, then it goes flat again, then another hill, and then flat again. So. You're gonna see some backhand turnovers. Also, a forehand driver can work here if you kind of use the hillside to control the speed. Yeah, there's a lot of counter skips on this hole with the forehand, but I don't really know if our card will see that. Maybe from Addison, but he's lefty, yeah, so it's so kind of opposite. Yeah. He doesn't re even really count. No. That's a nice shot. That's in the circle. <laughs> oh, we're gonna see a forehand here from Landon, okay. And yeah, it gives you a little bit of room to work the left side of the there's hill. That, yeah, the control from the hill is nice because you might take a skip. On, off to the right is a little bit of a drop off. So if you can hit that hill and just check right up, it's awesome. And slide up there to Circle's Edge as you can see those red flags at the top of the hill. And here is Addison with that left hand. We don't put lefties aren't in the stats, right? No, there's no lefty stats. Okay, good, yeah. Maybe uh, maybe someday. Yeah, I think that's a great th stat to have. Lefties, righties, how they do on certain holes. I mean, you could certainly break down how fair a hole is based on the, the player's orientation. Oh, sure. Well, I was making a joke saying that we don't even include them in our calculations. Mm -hmm. but Yeah, I don't really like jokes. Okay, gotcha. Good putt great from Paul. putt from Paul, not joking around at all. Should have maybe taken a cue from him there because he's staying serious and making these putts. Looks like the floppy duck is a, a memory that he buried long ago. Yeah, he killed that duck. Great putt there. Landon, great start so far. Yeah, four really, down through five holes. Really good. And Miles creeping in there with his birdie. Another star frame for our feature group here. That's great. Hole six, par three, 267. This one moves right and downhill. It's a pretty tight little fairway. Backhand turnover or a forehand driver, really, for a right-handed player. You just gotta miss some trees. And then when you get down there, hopefully not skip too big, because if you're far right, there's a lot of rough. Yeah, it's, it's pretty thick all the way down the hole. If you kick early, oh wow, Ooh. okay, that's a great shot from Miles. It, yeah, he calls sneaky there because that was not exactly what he was looking for, but managed to get down there inside the circle, so the job is almost done. But any early kicks could leave you in a really tough spot, so it's really important to hit that initial gap and just get down there as far as you can. Mm -hmm. If you're, you're going to miss your shot, at least hit the initial gap and then deal with it. Yeah. 
Land in a little too overstable or maybe a little too much hyzer. Paul going with the backhand look and scooting down over the hillside just inside the circle. He'll have about 30 feet left there for his birdie. This needs to get sneaky. And there is an inside route that is very real, and you see it here with Addison yeah. right around Circle's Edge as well. But, um, yeah, we had about two shots hit the fairway there, actually. <laughs> and we got four shots all putting for birdie, so that's great. Wow. Oh, yes. And you saw it there on the graphic, 52-footer, so smooth. And just keeping the momentum going, Landon is on fire. Wow. And... Get out of the way there. Mike's jumping out of the way in the last second. One of the best catch cam videographers in the sports history, maybe. Oh, yeah. Give him number one. All right, I'll give him number one. And a good putt there for Paul as that basket looks huge next to him. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's got to pause that and look how big that basket looked. <laughs> Three birdies on. Wow, this is great. Good work here on our card for a Three birdies in hole six. Seems to be one of the tougher holes in the course. Oh, and, no. And that's going to add a little bit more difficulty to the scoring average, or a higher number, at least. Yeah. Hole seven, par four, 462 feet. Early mandatory to the right, so you have to play down the tunnel. Then you're out here in the field. A great shot would just put you in this sunny area, set you up for a shot across the ravine to the green. And I don't know if Landon's going to line up a forehand here or not, but if you can flex a forehand, you can get way up there and potentially give yourself a look at a putt. I think McBeezy will do it. McBeezy with the forehand, huh? Yeah, I think oh, he will. And got one here from Landon here. And the key oh, here no. is to, well, first off, hit the gap as Landon has hit the early tree. That's disaster. But you have to keep it low. If you hit it high at all, there's so many things that are impossible to see that form this gap and that looks too high but he's gotten through everything and i mean wow that's great that would have been at the bottom of the hill putting uphill from probably 35 40 feet for eagle if i had not hit that last bit yeah but that's still huge get through oh no okay well yep, these guys the have been kind of moving along but this is going to give them some trouble i think being over here after one on a par four it would be a great save if they could get it. Oh, no, this is perhaps that's, going to the street. Oh, that's not coming back either. That's just Okay, so, yeah, OB. this is going to be a huge number, unfortunately. Yeah. Five best-case scenario most likely is six because the angle from the left side where he, well, he'll, where he yeah. crossed out of bounds is yeah. very tricky to get um, to the pin. So he can potentially save it with a really nice approach, but it's going to be tough. Yeah. Landon with a pretty good out, though. Mm-hmm. Here's Addison looking for that save. Yeah, and yeah there's just so the many things in the way. Really tough. He'll, he'll need a huge putt. And that's going to hurt, especially what after the... Miles looking at right now? Oh, gosh, nothing. Where was he even? He's left, and he's trying to go cut it through, huh? Yeah. I mean, at that angle, there's really no way to get there cleanly. It's just... Oh, there's so many wasn't tiny holes. great from Landon. He tried to put a jump putt, but it looks like it got a little turned over. Here's Paul for an eagle. I think he'll have to settle for birdie, but mm -hmm. making that hole look easy. Yeah, and I mean, I I don't know. It, the word tweener comes into mind when thinking about this hole. Mm -hmm. You can either call it the fourth easiest hole in the course because it averages 3.66, mm. or it's one of the hardest par threes you'll ever play. Yeah. Um, but it's right in between both of them. But as you see here, we're going to get plenty of scoring separation one way or the other. Definitely. And Landon's going to have that for five. So we're going to have some fives, a six, and one three. So regardless of what the par is, it's it's mixing it up. Yeah. Yeah, I don't mind this hole as a four. Just be, It's kind of selfish, but I'm just saying, how many times do we get a par four where a sweet forehand gets you the eagle look? Yeah, right, and really no other play is going to give you that good of a look. It's not. It's very rare. Yeah, okay. All right. I'll be selfish with that. I like that idea. Nice birdie. 
Not so great on the putter pickup, but good yeah, birdie. Yeah, that's after the fact. Hole eight, par three, 213 feet. This is our shortest hole. We are just going dead straight up the middle here. There actually is kind of a backdoor right-hand hyzer if you want it, but I think most of these guys are just gonna take that widest gap, flat mid-range, try to take one or two skips and stay on the green here. If you go to the right, you can kind of go down the hill. Now, I didn't really believe that backhand hyzer route existed until I practiced with Brad Williams and he threw a skip ace. Oh man, yeah, well I played with him and he parked it through there. So it does exist. Yeah. The line that Paul went for does not exist. Trees are real and they are in the way. Yes. Here's a little mid-range forehand action. Oh, and could still work. It still worked, but man, that, that little limb that he hit isn't even a, a branch. It's, well, it's a branch, but it's hanging off another tree. Yeah. It's not, oh. I hate it when you hit stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, look at that. That Great is ideal. Skip. That is Oh yeah, that, like, sit down, it got that is one. so perfect. The, the touch on that, just a little bit of nose up so that it gets that little bit of skip and ride. A little Annie skip to have a nice finish right there. Beautiful. I believe that might be a glow recon mortar. Mm. The way that it came out of his hand. I could be wrong, but I'm usually not. That's cool, I wanna try a glow. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm wrong quite a bit. But uh, <laughs> Addison with a great shot deflecting off the bushes there, he's parked. Paul with a little forehand escape. And that's got to be careful. What great touch there. Any more momentum, that thing might be going down the hill. Yeah. Yep. Nice birdie putt. Addison, good recovery after that tough last hole. Making birdie and landing back on the birdie train. Look at that, three players at minus five. Wow. Hole nine, par five. Very short, very technical par five. I actually might even put this one as the most technical hole on the course over that, okay. that first woods hole. I'm not sure, because there's some trees in the middle here that make it really tough. Either way, they're both tough, but you gotta go very, very straight off the tee. You really have to make it all the way to the bottom to have a chance at three. This is sort of hard to to par this, like to decide what the par is here, mm -hmm. I mean. It's a it's a pretty hard four for oh, sure. Wow. Oh, what a kick! That's one of the, oh gosh, it's actually Miles has gone too far. It's so thick w where he landed there that it's going to be really difficult for him to even lean out and have a look at the pin. However, he's only as we see a nice shot from landing here with the technical forehand mm -hmm, flip up. Mm -hmm. Really beautiful play on this hole, but it's so difficult to to get a look at the pin unless you throw an absolutely an absolute dream shot. Yep. Um, and that's what makes it that's what makes it a par five. Also, some trees have fallen down over the years. This may have been a little bit more of a legitimate par five several years ago. I'm gonna put this as a par four now. Yeah. Um, if you throw one decent tee shot and you have 150 feet left for a three, yeah, that's a par four. Yeah. But if you don't, then you're gonna have to pitch out there, as we've seen from Addison. And then looks like he's nailed this shot at least though oh. after the pitch out. That was phenomenal. Yeah, really. <laughs> and wow, it was really good. And Landon with a really nice forehand tee shot is still in a tricky mm. spot because there's so many trees around the corner that you can't quite see. And Paul from a knee. That's really nice. He'll have an opportunity there for his three. And as you see here from Miles, it's just really all you wow. can do is pitch out. I mean, it's just a bummer because it was such a great drive. It really was. Uh-oh. Yep. So the scoring average on this one is 4.67. Okay. So it makes it one of the easier holes in the course, but it really doesn't feel like anything about this hole is easy. No. Oh, no. And, you know, that's kind of part of the reason right there. Yeah, a lot can happen. You get through all that and you get to the green. You see here, we actually have a hard packed ground, sloped green, and anything can happen. Here's Paul for that very rare three. Mm. Wow, right by the chains. Great bid down there. And Landon really in the first bit of trouble we've seen him in thus far in the round. Let's 
solid straddle putt there for Miles. Yeah, he really had to persevere there. He threw some really good shots, but not the greatest luck, and still good job fighting and keeping that birdie happening. Addison in for five. Paul will have easy birdie here. And Landon with the par. At 519, it's such a short par five, you can kind of afford to chunk it up a little and you can still maybe yeah. get a par. But that's it for our front nine. We've got Paul at 26, leading the charge along with Miles, I believe. I didn't quite see it fast yeah, enough. Yeah, Miles, after his bogey start, has birdied uh, seven of the last eight holes in the front nine. Wow. See if you can take that momentum into the back. Yeah. Join us, please, to see the conclusion of this round from Joe Mez Pro. Thanks a lot, and we will see you guys later.